Okay, this is supposed to be the content control scene writer talk. Uh, hello to those who don't know me. I'm Miklos. Uh, I'm from Hungary. I'm hacking on LibreOffice for a while now. Uh, at, now as a collaborator. And this talk will be about uh, content controls, also known as structured document tags from the UXML specification. And um, how um, they are used to be handled in the writer and how that got improved and so on. So what's the feature? Um, the, um, what we try to um, support here is uh, form filling. And um, when you fill in some form, like you need to specify your name and your birth date and your favorite color and so on, um, when you type in some tags, then would it be nice that um, writer has all this rich text formatting, like you can par mark part of the text as bold and custom font size and font and whatnot. And um, um, all this is um, not possible with writer fields because that's really just a dummy character and then we have some string um, stored somewhere about what uh, the field is expanding to. And um, wouldn't it be nice if this would be rather an annotation on, on writer text so that you could have the full formatting and you can have like um, images and code there and, and all these um, usual things that you, you uh, know from writer. And uh, for additional trouble, uh, we started supporting this in like 2007. And for all of those documents, in case there was rich for formatting there, then we could not um, import that um, to writer perfectly. Um, so uh, given that it can have character formatting inside, uh, that means that uh, we break that into multiple text portions in, in writer. And um, so unlike fields, which are always um, 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 some static tags uh, with no custom formatting, this can be multiple um, portions. Although, at least for this inline content controls, uh, it's uh, always inside a single paragraph. So if you would like to model that with bookmarks, that would not be perfect either, because bookmarks can be starting at random positions and ending at other random positions. A bookmark may start inside the table and uh, finish um, outside the table, or at least in multiple paragraphs, and that's, you know. Um, an additional trouble is that um, um, content control support nesting, similar to the meta uh, text attributes we already had in Writer. Uh, so um, if we model this with fields, which would be another candidate, then we have the trouble that you can't uh, nest fields inside each other in Writer, because fields are modeled with a dummy character, and you can't really hide a dummy character inside the dummy character. Um, so it seems what uh, what is the perhaps the closest is like this meta like text attributes, and uh, that that can be used to support to enforce that uh, the um, the content control stays inside a single paragraph. It supports full writer formatting and it supports nesting. Um, so, and then there are multiple types of, um, of uh, these content controls. When we don't uh, specify the type explicitly, then this, it means this rich text. So that's what you can uh, see at the bottom. Like um, the content control may break to multiple layout lines, and even inside um, one layout line it might have multiple portions, and there is this uh, shading um, to, to signal that uh, you are interacting with the content control and there is also a border around um, the bounding box of the multiple portions. Uh, note that um, we are done with the rich text. Um, it's more interesting in case uh, we can add like, a more specific control uh, to uh, the different types. So you can have a checkbox. Um, again, this is like writer tags. This is not um, a control shape that you need to manually position and pray that the text around is not getting relayouted and then it will not uh, look like the way you want. Um, and also, you don't need to like manually search for these characters, like what is the checkbox and what is the unchecked checkbox and so on. Uh, because um, when you insert this in Writer, then it will set it for you. 
And if you want something else, like uh, let's say um, a cross mark or a check mark, then you can customize them. But uh, you get something same by default. This was a trouble with uh, with a field mark based approach, which also had check boxes, but um, you, we have no UI to insert this. So it's some functionality which is kind of there. It's nice. It's in, not in the UI. Users don't find it, so you don't get bug reports. But it's it's not really useful because um, yeah, you, you can't really create or modify this. Um, and uh, this is also working. Test, test. Okay. I should not touch this button. I will turn it this way and perhaps it helps. Like, at least you can wash my fingers. Um, so uh, this also works nicely with accessibility. You can navigate with the cursor to the control and press space to toggle the checkbox. Um, somewhat similar is the drop-down one. Um, so this one. It will be a little bit uncomfortable to stay in this, but I can still move. Now this will be a little bit more like a lecture, which is not nice, but at least you can hear me. That's, that's the point. Um, so to drop down content controls. Um, uh, this has a um, number of additional complexities. So what you can see on the screen is, um, uh, if you navigate uh, with your cursor inside that uh, drop-down content control, then we also draw an additional drop-down button, at least something that looks like a button. Um, and uh, you can click on that and you get um, um, a list of, um, you get these list items and then you can choose, let's say, your favorite color. Um, one constraint there is that for drop-down there is no freeform user input, so it's enforced that what goes into that content control is on, um, one of these list items. And also we have the, uh, we have um, um, display name and the value for each of these items. So this can be nice in case you have some human readable name, and also you have a programmatic name for that. And um, later, for example, with data bindings, you can read the programmatic name, and you don't have to worry if God, perhaps the, the display name was translated or something, then you don't have to adjust your parsing script. Um, and uh, one additional complexity here is that for, for checkbox, you can kind of survive by initially just hard coding your Unicode values for what's the toggled and untoggled uh, Unicode character for the checkbox. But for a drop-down, you really need to provide some UI to uh, create, um, show, modify, and delete those list items. So an additional content control properties dialog is now provided, uh, which initially just had one single checkbox to track if this content control is currently a placeholder or not, because you want to provide different behavior. In case it's a placeholder and you click into that, then we pre-select the text so it's easy to type it over. Uh, but uh, if you already feel that you're something valuable, then doing the same would be a bit inconvenient. Um, and uh, then this dialog uh, gets extended depending on the type of the content control. Um, so for uh, drop downs, um, you get this additional um, um, uh, grid where you can specify the items and do the usual operations on them. You can also um, alter the ordering of these items. Uh, the next one is uh, picture content control. Uh, so imagine that you are preparing some CV template and uh, there is a position where you would like to have some uh, picture for the applicant and you want to do uh, pre-formatting of the, um, this image. So you decide where it will be inserted, what will be the size, perhaps uh, specify some good looking border there and so on. You can do this, all this with um, 
with a placeholder, and then you uh, mark it as a placeholder picture. And when you click on that, or you go there and press space in the keyboard case, then the normal insert image picker is showing up, and you can replace the placeholder with an actual image, retaining the original formatting. So again, the, the focus is on uh, somebody with a good taste can, can uh, um, do all the tricky formatting to make it nice looking, and for the end user, they just need to insert the image and not bother with um, how it looks good. Next one is uh, date uh, content control. That's somewhat similar to the drop down uh, because um, again, we, we show some additional VC widgets when you uh, navigate into the content control and you get this uh, date picker. Um, it has some uh, less visible features, um, like uh, you can specify the language uh, that's used for, for formatting, like you get a timestamp from the date picker and you need to present that somehow. We need to turn it to some string and then you format the date. Uh, we, we can have a date format and also we can specify a language. So in general, LibreOffice has a pretty good knowledge about how to do these things. It's um, more like uh, hooking up this uh, date content controller to do the usual uh, date formatting. Uh, then you have the plain text one, like this is odd, like we did this much work to have rich text inside the content control. And of course, then you want the opposite. Like let's have one type, which, is, which uh, locks it all down and make sure that it's plain text. Um, and this only makes sense in case your document is already like um, full of content controls for all the inputs, and then it would be odd to have something completely different, just like an input field, uh, just for one type. So in this case, what you can do is um, like uh, if imagine that what's visible here is would be some normal uh, non-board text. You make a selection and you make just that single word board, and then uh, due to this constraint, the um, entire control control will be marked as board. Um, so what else we have? Combo box. Um, this is I think this is the most recent type. This is pretty similar to drop down, but this one is allowing freeform user input. Um, so, so far about like what you can see um, about content controls as a user. Um, perhaps like this is supposed to be the development track. So perhaps uh, you are also interested in like how this is implemented. So I will say a few words about that as well. Um, so when it comes to the document model, it's um, very similar to these meta text, text attributes, which also lack a UI, but otherwise the idea would be that you can mark a span inside the paragraph and you can put some attributes on, or like semantic um, annotation and whatnot on that. Anyhow, the, 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 the idea is that um, um, there is a content control class which is actually um, storing all these properties, uh, like the type and what are the list items of a Dropbox uh, drop down and, and uh, what is the language of the date formatting and so on. And uh, once you have the, the core content control, uh, you need to have some kind of pool item subclass because that's that's how we work. Like whenever we insert formatting to write our text, we work with pool items. Like we have a pool item for uh, a board text or underlying and so on. So we have a, a pool item subclass, uh, this uh, format content control, uh, for um, uh, to to be able to insert a content control around some existing text. And then you need to somehow track um, when this content control is starting and ending, and if we are expanding that at the end of the paragraph and stuff like that. So uh, you need a text attribute subclass for that. So text content control is doing that. And um, initially, I, uh, I only added a dummy character at the start, so that um, it was a property of this text content control when it ends. Um, this means that when you travel with your cursor, then you can explicitly decide when you enter the content control. So if you at the very start, then you can decide if you are typing right before the content control or at the start of the content control, but inside, because it's a different character position. And initially, I did not have a dummy character at the end, but that turned out to be annoying if um, you have some content control at the end of the program, then um, 
um, whatever you do, somebody will be unhappy. Either you go to the end and you start typing and you want it to add some content like outside and you are unhappy because you are typing inside or the other way around, like you want it to append some, something at the end and um, you can't really type at the very end of the content control still inside. So this is also solved by um, having a dummy character at the end as well. Thanks a lot. It's like, I don't know, it's uncom uncomfortable to sit down and not having the ability to walk. Um, and um, yeah, additional, one additional benefit is that we have these problems, for example, with bookmarks, that uh, the bookmarks are just referring to document model position. So in case you have two bookmarks starting at the same uh, position, then it's not clear, really clear what's the ordering. Um, in case we have a demo character at the start and also at the end, then you just avoid this problem because uh, there is a different document model position if you, um, let's say, anchor some image right before the content control or inside but at its start. And then uh, for the UNO API, that's needed because the whole ODT import and export is mostly working with that. So it's necessary to expose that somehow, somehow with the UNO API. We have a content control class wrapping the core implementation. Um, also, um, it has a text um, class which is uh, giving you a virtual text object which is just the piece inside the paragraph which is the content control. Uh, so let's say you have like three words in a paragraph and um, and uh, one, the middle word is, um, is the content control, then you get a virtual text object which looks like containing just that word. Even if uh, in, in practice that's um, one, one full paragraph and it has other content. Um, then for the layout, um, it always works by creating these layout portions. So you now there is a content control portion and uh, that's uh, similar to the text, normal text portion. And that's how the layout knows how to do this shading and, and border around uh, the content control and so on. Um, the border is quite similar to input fields, so that can be um, um, SDR overlay and similar to selections or, or um, commands on text ranges. Uh, for the uh, pop-ups, uh, you need um, a control subclass similar to the um, uh, page break editing widget uh, because that knows how to travel with the document when you scroll up and down. And uh, we have two of these. Um, uh, we have a drop-down one for drop-downs and also for combo boxes. And we have another one uh, for the date picker. Um, then perhaps uh, you want to save this and load it back. Um, this is, um, as mentioned, um, uh, this whole content control concept was introduced in OAC some amount of times. So you can ignore DOC and RTF and other legacy formats. Just make sure that you fall back to plain text, but otherwise uh, no need to bother with the formatting. Um, DOCX has this SDT markup for this, which is like our document model was intentionally um, uh, created in a way that it's more or less a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, from that marker uh, to this. Although still there are complexities at loading and um, saving when it comes to data binding. And that was already there because like a year ago, Vasily was working on that. And I imagine that the next talk will go into specifics regarding this. And it's nice that those filter risk could be left unchanged. So what he was doing at filter level is still useful today because just the um, for um, writer implementation goes well, but the API is still the same. Um, then for ODT, I had to introduce some new scheme bits um, so that um, uh, you can describe all these um, content control types and the properties and whatnot. And um, in, um, in the PDF case, that's the most recent thing, uh, we export these as fillable forms, which is nice because in, in most cases um, for all these um, 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 content controls, it's something that's a single line and it's something that you can model with the rectangle and then it fits nicely to the PDF form filling concept and uh, Word is just exporting this as plain text so we can do better. 
Uh, then we have some UI for this. So I already showed you how the content control properties dialog look like uh, in the drop-down case. Uh, so this is what you can you get uh, in the checkbox case. Uh, you can define like what are the two Unicode characters that you get when you um, interact with the con uh, checkbox content control. Um, so we have menu items, and in the online case, we have the, the node bar buttons. To, to insert this. Uh, for the modification, we have a dialog. And if you want to um, modify the actual content, then you can just type it as normal writer text. There is no explicit UI for this. And uh, similarly, deletion happens by just selecting the entire content control, and you can delete it as similar to normal writer text. So this all looks good. How do we test this? Um, I was worried that if I leave testing to the very end, then there is no time for the last few items of the planned work. So I rather did this long list of tasks as, as working through the various features. Um, so there are cursor tasks, document model tasks, layout tasks, uh, loading and saving tasks, a PDF export tasks, UI tasks, and so on. So hopefully it's uh, not that trivial to break this feature without um, breaking some tasks at the same time. Um, we also have some ODF proposal, so that uh, ideally if uh, I bring enough cakes to Regina, then the next ODF version perhaps will contain something for this content control. Um, we have um, some documentation from the UNO, for the UNO API, um, and also two half pages for these two dialogues for the content control properties, and there is one inner dialog for the list items. So. That's mostly it. Uh, thanks to mostly NGI for funding this uh, feature. Um, it was um, possible to do this because they were um, uh, allocating resources uh, to do this. And that's mostly it. So content controls is like just one more way to create reliable forms in Triton. Um, if uh, for users coming from the Word side, this should be much more familiar because that's um, most of the features are that they know from that one. And now ODF can support this. We can export to PDF, and you have this number of types of uh, content controls enforcing different behavior um, based on what you what type you specify that in their time. So I think that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, Regina? Uh, the last time I, um, the last time I tested it... Uh, it's for the, for the YouTube stream. Uh, uh, last time I tested it, the combo box uh, didn't work. Um, is that uh, in the meantime, in the daily? And um, uh, second question, uh, may I assign bug reports directly to you? Is this right? I'm just answering for the sake of the stream. Uh, so combo box is a quite recent addition. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I would claim it's it was done in the like two or three weeks ago, something like this. So combo box and the PDF export is very recent. So that was not working. Like if you tested it like two months ago. What was the other question? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Question was. Um, uh, may I assign uh, back reports directly to you? Feel free to CC me and I will see uh, how I can find time to look at that. That's always... Uh, so that, that way I'm aware of, of things and, and directly assigning is considered not as friendly, so please don't do that, but CC is fine. I have also two questions. You said that um, um, it exports to PDF as a phone. Uh, and um, uh, as far as I remember, the, the text box in, in PDFs has fixed size. And uh, do you reflow the text? Do you recalculate the, the, the inside the PDF, how, how it's done? Or is, is it going to leave some space between words? Yeah, so 
the PDF model is working with fixed sizes like that's that's PDF that's why we like it because it's it's very hard to break it because it's that low level so in case you design your document so that it looks good at PDF export time then you need to fill the content control with some placeholder so that it has enough text um, so that's something you need to watch out for the second is uh, can I make a suggestion the checkbox uh, dialogue if you can go. Can we write instead of checkbox and colon, checkbox character, and then below just check it and uncheck it? Uh, you mean the, the checkbox uh, frame or the one of uh, the, the label? Book? The label checkbox, which is uh, bold. We put checkbox character and just below check it. And yep, I, I will show you the UI file and you can do it yourself once you know uh, where is the UI file because you are just tweaking the labels and that's fine. Like it, This dialogue looks like made by a developer and it, it is made by a developer. So uh, such improvements are always welcome. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's all. So thanks again.